What's up everybody, this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be getting into the Shorty Red Drum Theory. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today I'm going to be bringing back a very popular series that I was doing when I was working with BusyWorks Beats on Games Channel. This is the Drum Theory series and what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to be going over certain producers, highlighting some of their signature drum techniques and basically showing you all how to go about getting that type of sound and, you know, inspire you to build build on that theory and create your own so in um celebration of the 10 years of jeezy and shawty red working together and the trapper die 3 album coming out with or kate that came out which i really enjoy i went ahead and i wanted to do go ahead and do shawty red first and so before we get into anything um a lot of this stuff is going to be 808 driven trap stuff and it's going to really highlight you know how subtle differences can create you know a major stylistic change this um when you when you think about um shawty red the the things that it, it's not that he has he's not like a um like tm88 where they've got these uh crazy um different patterns or anything it's it, he really um focuses on on just simplicity a good bounce and subtle change-ups that that go throughout the song so if you're the type of producer who starts with the drums what i would recommend for you know really making something that's um that that moves like this is you're gonna want to start with one basic pattern but then uh you know take that pattern and kind of bounce it and flip it and um uh, to make to make at least three or four different patterns and that's going to make your arrangement really easy so the first thing i'm going to use is this is the uh, mafia kick from superstar o's trap legends kit um, really good kit for this for trapped it's just a basic um sub kick with a lot of the highs rolled off it's a really short release and the reason why you're looking for a sound like that is because it, you have two different types of um, schools of thought when it comes to 808s and and how they sound and how the that the kick works with them um for my personal preference i like to push the kick very far forward the kick is going to be the loudest part of the song the and the 808 is going to support that um a lot of shorty red's music is that kick and the 808 are, are, are very close in volume to where the kick is just acting as the attack of the 808, but you hear more of the 808 than anything. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get that sound. Um, first, we're just gonna go ahead and start with just a basic kick pattern. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this up. And then um, a, a, a key signature of his style is on is on the eighth bar. Um, there'll be like a a, a a a a roll or just a difference in timing. Um, here I'm gonna go ahead and just use a sixteenth note roll. Go ahead and slice that up. Um, for your snare, um, it's just you usually in a lot of his stuff you'll either hear the the clap or um, just a regular papery trap snare. That, that snare is from uh, um, the uh, Av McCree Kill Bill Volume 2 kit. It's a $15 kit. It's a really good kit. I use it in every track. I don't get I don't get anything from um, plugging that kit except for just being honest with you guys and letting you know that's what I use. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay these snares down. Now... The thing about the, the thing about these snares and and the kick pattern that we have going, let me go ahead and just change the color of this so you guys can see it. All right, so the, so our kicks are in green and the snares are in red, right? Um, you're, you'll notice if it, it, 
on the uh, at the end of this the second bar of you know each of these little patterns is there's nothing there's nothing happening on that four beat which can you know kind of lead to kind of lead to an empty groove we'll listen to it like normally you would uh, normally you would have like some type of kick roll here or, or something that's going on um in order to make patterns like this where the kicks are um focused more on the first part of the bar you can use other percussive percussive sounds to add um rhythm to where you would normally have a kick so for example if I was making this pattern without what I'm about to do, I would take, you know, I would go ahead and copy and paste the kick here. See how this changes the groove. You see how it gives it, it, it gives it a better, it gives it a better vibe. So instead of, instead of doing that, um, a lot of the times what you'll find in Shoddy Red's beats is that he'll use another percussion sound whether it be an open hi-hat or a hi-hat roll and um, in this case we're going to use a snare to kind of add to that vibe All right, so I, I like that. Now, all, all I'm going to do is go ahead and add an 808 into this. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste this into Silent. I have I went I went ahead and already created an 808 patch for Silent, and I'm going to go ahead and put this 808 patch as well as the MIDI for this lesson in the Dropbox for the subscribers of Studio1Tutorials.com, so you guys can go ahead and download that and experiment with it. Um, let me see, let me move this down. Move this down to A. It'll probably sound a little bit better. Now this this pattern right here, this is one of these uh, um more more throwback type of patterns where your kicks are, are are spaced out a little bit more so if you wanted to you'd be perfectly fine like putting an arp and a hi-hat pattern over this and just keeping it on on this one bass note without without doing a lot of movement me personally i would i would prefer more to kind of add add some variation at the end at the turnaround something you know so, something to do a little bit different but uh, again this is um <clears throat> even even if you didn't choose to do that it would work completely fine because this is more of a uh, this is more of a throwback um trap type of feel you know before you know the competition started really increasing as far as the musicality in the genre is concerned um then you go ahead and just you know a regular eighth note pattern and that's you know so, something like that is really going to add a lot of, of you know a lot of character to this we could just start go ahead and insert our roles
you know, putting roles before the snare, that's going to, that's going to, that's going to give the, um, the groove a perception of kind of sucking you into the snare, which is how you get the head nod vibe. You know, the, the, um, the kick is where your head kind of comes up and then the snare is when the head goes down. If you, if you pay attention to, you know, while you're listening to music. And then you can just go ahead and double that up. And you could already hear like the, over here, you could let, you know, you'd have your piano or go in and then have some different brass or some strings in the background or maybe a two bell following, you know, following this bass section. So this is a really um, simple and effective way to get to get a, tra a great trap beat going. Um, once you go, when, once you have this, you can just go ahead and duplicate it. Um, and then start messing around with like, see, here's one pattern. You got one with the hi-hats, one without the, the hi-hats. So that's, that's already one pattern. Um, and then you could go ahead and take this and duplicate it again and say, say, just do a pattern with, with, with only hi-hat rolls, right? And then see how that sounds. And then say right here, you know, just to, um, you know, when you start out with a pattern that's so open, you can um, really be more open to, to adding different variations. So if you listen to all of it together, you know, now, now you have, you, you know, you have 24 bars in double time. That's a 12 bar straight time verse. Um, you know, all you got to do is make a hook pattern now and you're like, you're halfway through the song. So there you guys have it. That is the Shawty Red Drum Theory Lesson 1. Um, just the main thing that you want to take away from this is, you know, to, to get in this type of vibe, the more the more classic um, true trap vibe is just to, you know, start out with simple kick patterns. Don't overdo it with your rolls. You know, you it can be a very repetitive thing up until you get to this to this eighth bar. Then you want to go ahead and switch it up. Um, your snares go ahead and add an accent snare to kind of um, add to the groove and and do and do what an extra kick might supposed to be doing. Don't think too hard with your hi hats. Just roll them before you get to the snare at some point, um, and you're going to create a, an excellent groove, and that'll be able to um provide you with a level of customization as you get into other patterns you could just leave out your hi-hats or you could leave out certain parts of your hi-hats or you could you know change the change the pattern completely but once you get into working in this in this fashion you know putting your melodies and your pads and your chords over top of this is it's just going to make it so easy to um make 
a complete track because you're already going to have, you know, three or four patterns laid out to where there is a subtle enough difference in the music that the interest from the listener is going to be extremely easy to capture. And remember, that's always what you're working for when you're creating a piece of music is to go ahead and express a, first an emotion, a feeling, an idea, and then second, to keep the listener interested long enough so you get to express what it is you want to say. So thanks again for subscribing, everybody. This is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions. Keep it simple. Don't be basic. And we will see y'all on the next one.